and we're back hello everyone welcome to another let's play of phoenix wright aids attorney my name is anna Mardal. we are going into part two of the third case of the first game <laughs> boy that's <laughs> okay um we're doing the samurai one if that helps there we go we're on day two we're on the trial we're about, about to go to the trial um, so in part one, we met our client and we got the supposedly incriminating photo of him going to the crime scene, but it was a photo of, of someone in his, I'm not sure what the word is, costume with full, you know, mask and, and, and cover up clothes so who knows if it was him or somebody dressed as him um so not really a slam dunk case but i mean it does at least explain why the police arrested him um since our client was supposed to be the only other person on the set that day um well besides a security guard and a um an assistant both of whom uh, are, are a much smaller build and probably wouldn't have filled out that costume the way that they did. So, uh, so, so it, it's kind of reasonable that the police arrested our, our client. He, 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 he was present on the set. He doesn't have an alibi. His alibi is that he was sleeping alone in his room. There's a picture of someone who looks like him in his costume going to the scene of the crime. It's, it's all very circumstantial, but it's at least reasonable circumstantial. So, um, it's going to be tricky to prove his innocence. It's also going to be tricky because unlike um, the, the previous case with Maya, we don't, as far as I know, we don't have a witness who is just outright lying through her teeth. Um, it, it, it looks bad for our client, but it looks bad in a, well, who else could it have been kind of way as opposed to a, a, a lying witness like we had in, actually in the first two cases in the first two cases both uh, mr saw it and um miss april may uh both of them were lying so it was relatively easy to kind of start tripping them up i don't think we have a liar yet so that's gonna be that's gonna be difficult i'm not sure what we'll do oh and edgeworth is here it still doesn't explain how we know Edgeworth, except that we sort of maybe went to school together. So until they give us some actual canon, as long as I'm forced to make up my own head canon, I'm just gonna assume that Edgeworth and Phoenix dated in college and had, you know, some kind of breakup over the nature of justice and whether they should be defense attorneys or prosecuting attorneys. Um, and you know, now it's all it's all tense and awkward and, and you know, simmering with anger. Um, and, you know, it kind of breaks Phoenix's heart going up against Edgeworth, knowing that he, you know, his, his friend and his lover is, is willing to fabricate evidence and put innocent people in prison just to satisfy this, this need he has to, to make sure everyone, all the guilty people go to prison, even though that logic doesn't even make sense, because by virtue of fabricating evidence to send innocent people to prison, you're guaranteeing that the guilty people won't go to prison. So it's not really a well-rounded moral philosophy or, or even an, a logically internally consistent one. Um, but it is all that Edgeworth has. So I'm sure that it breaks Phoenix's heart. Oh, Chris Viewer is so cute. He just rolled over so I could pet his tummy. Hold on just a second. Oh, important tummy pets. Oh, sh Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. The prosecution will show the court that at 2.30 p.m. on October 15th, the defendant, Mr. Will Powers, killed fellow actor Jack Hammer in Studio One of Global Studios. It is impossible for anyone else to have committed this heinous crime. The evidence presented during the trial will all point to this fact. Hmm, I see. Very well. I would like to move on to some testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution may call its first witness. Very well. I call a most familiar face, Detective Gumshoe, to the stand. 
Detective, if you would briefly describe this case to the court. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to look at our... All right, so here's all the people in this case. We've got Mia, or Maya, who is Mia's little sister, and she's our, she's helping us. Miles, our, our ex-boyfriend. Um, Detective Gumshoe, who is not good at his job. Will Powers, who is our defendant. Um, the security lady, who has a name, but okay, whatever. Jack Hammer, who is the victim. And the assistant named Penny Nichols, um, who seems sweet, and I, I like her a lot. So hopefully, hopefully she's not the killer. It'll break my heart if she is. Yes, sir. I'll explain with a guide map here. To understand this case, it's important to grasp the layout of the studio, see? This here is the employee area. The actors did a run-through of their action scenes during the morning here. This is the main gate to the studios. The security lady that works at the studios was here at 1 p.m. on that day. Past the security station, there is a gate. See? Past that are the studios. And here it is, Studio 1. This is the scene of the murder where the body was found. Now, on the day of the murder, October 15th, there were only three people here. The victim, Jack Hammer, the defendant, Will Powers, and a young woman, the production assistant. All the production staff were in the employee area until noon. Oh, neat. Then after the lunch, the victim, Jack Hammer, went to Studio One. Right after that, at 1 p.m., the security lady got to the guard station. Now jump ahead to later that day, 5 p.m. The production staff came to Studio One to perform a hurt rehearsal. Needless to say, the rehearsal was cancelled. Time of death was 2.30 p.m. The samurai spear found lodged in the victim's chest was the murder weapon. That's the case, in brief. Anyone like to hear that again? Should I listen to the whole thing again? Uh... I don't think so? We're good. I think I could probably remember that. It's actually, I'm really impressed at the game, because this is a lot to remember. And yet, uh, I feel pretty clear on what happened so far, and and it could have easily not been that way. So so it's, 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 they put a lot of work into, um... Making this game. I'm impressed by it. So the murder weapon was a spear? How medieval. Your Honor, this case is quite simple if you ask one question. And that question is, what did the security lady at the guard station see? Understood. Let's call this security officer to the stand. Will the witness declare her name? Hmm? My, aren't you a handsome fella? I'm afraid I'm a bit flustered. Uh, your name, please. Oh, dearie. No need for you to be embarrassed. Just call me Grandma. Your name, please. Seems Edward has a bit of trouble getting his witnesses to say their names. Wendy Old Bag, dear. Oh, God. Wendy Bag. <laughs> Wendy Old Bag, dear. So just call me Grandma. It's practically my name. Even when I was young, I was an old bag. So how the other children make fun of me? And would you believe it? But there was this boy that kept in the chest of the And he called me Old Bag because I was trying to try to crush him. Objection. I object to the witness's talkativeness. Objection sustained. The witness will refrain from rambling on the stand. I was just getting to the good part, dearie. Perhaps we could get to the testimony. Now, the witness was stationed at the main gate on the day of the murder, correct? Yes, I was. 
And to get to the seat of the murder, someone would have to pass by you? You know your stuff, dearie. You may begin your testimony. She sure is one hell of an old bag. On the day of the murder, I arrived at the guard station at 1 p.m. Poor old Hannah and the rest have been doing a run-through there since the morning. I, well, I had some errands to run that morning. Anyway, it was 1 p.m. when I got to the guard station. I was at the main gate from then until 5. Now the murder happened at 2.30 p.m., right? Interesting to me, because a certain man walked by me at 2 p.m. It was Powers. That man right there, and he was heading towards the studio. Okay. You saw the defendant then? Hmm. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Now, I'm informed that I can press more than I have been. I want to know more about these errands. What kind of errands? Oh, well, you know. Answer the question. Actually, I was watching poor How Hammer and Powers. Observing, you know. Observing? Weren't you supposed to be at the guard station? Whippersnapper! I told you I locked the gate, didn't I? I did my job. I'm not sure your boss would see it that way. Anyway. I always watch Hammer's run-throughs. Always. Never miss one in all my years. Wow. I want to see a steel samurai run through too. You could quit being a spirit medium and take up guard duty. What a bad idea. Anyway, it was 1 p.m. when I got to the guard station. Okay. Let me get this straight, old bag. Er, Ms. Old Bag. You've been saying since yesterday that you saw Mr. Powers, correct? But you're talking about the man in this photo, aren't you? J just a moment, Mr. Wright. Let me see that photo. What is this exactly? None other than the Steel Samurai, defender of Neo Old Tokyo. Ms. Oldback, is this the Mr. Powers that you saw? Of course! Didn't your mama teach you any sense, Sonny? Anyone can plainly see that's Powers, right? No, they can't. Uh, well, I wonder. True. Mr. Powers does play the role of the Steel Samurai. But... That doesn't mean Mr. Powers is the Seal Samurai. I I know that. I wasn't born yesterday. No one in this court is accusing you of that uh, witness. He's having trouble calling her old bag, apparently. However, you do not have proof that the person in this photo is Mr. Will Powers, do you? Huh. Nosy old man. Of course I have proof. What? Huh? Even Edgeworth is surprised? The prosecution would like to ask the, the witness. Please make known all the information in your possession ahead of time. How was I to know everyone would be so nosy? You should be ashamed, all of you. Anyway, I showed that photo to the young detective. He told me, this isn't any good as evidence, pal. He didn't even give it a second look. Wow. Old windbag has left even Edgeworth speechless. She's good. Let's hear about your proof then. I never say anything I don't mean, mind you. That morning, during the run through the action scene, I saw Powers trip and fall. He broke one of the props. It was a big mess. Apparently, he sprained his ankle pretty bad. 
Now look at that picture. You can see he's dragging his legs. See? Clear as day. That's how I knew it was Powers. Happy? Hmm. So he had sprained his ankle? Very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine this witness. She's got to be hiding something. I'll press her until she squeals. Uh. present at the run-through. Well, let's see. There was Powers, he's the Steel Samurai, then Pearl Hammer, the Evil Magistrate, and me. And what exactly were you doing? Observing! Just observing. What about the assistant? Oh, she was off moving backdrops around and such. So she didn't see the run-through then. Full? Yes! And to think he's supposed to be the Steel Samurai, what a laugh! So, Power sprained his ankle! I helped make it better for him, of course! You helped make it better for him? I kissed it where it hurt. Let's just skip over that part, shall we? Where was the assistant then? Oh, her? She was cleaning up back props, I think. She didn't know about Power's ankle. You may continue your testimony. Hold it. He broke a prop? Sure did! His own samurai spear! His samurai spear? The, the murder weapon? Luckily I was there with my duct tape to fix it! This strikes me as a significant detail. I better write this down in the court record. If a kiss made it better. Was Mr. Power's ankle badly sprained? Not so bad that he couldn't walk around. He went to his dressing room to rest up after lunch. Less than that. Anyway, I saw him dragging his foot when he walked. Dragging his foot, okay. Now I think we've heard enough. Haven't we, Your Honor? Well, there is one thing that bothers me. Which is... Where is this steel samurai costume now? Uh, actually, we couldn't find it. We're looking, though. Hmm. Anyway, that's not important. The witness did see the Steel Samurai, yes. And it is clear that the person in the Steel Samurai suit was Mr. Will Powers. I suppose that's right. Are you sure you're sure, Your Honor? Hold it right there. We keep talking possibilities, but we have to agree that this photo shows the Steel Samurai. Nowhere in this photo can we see Mr. Will Powers. The defense has a point. I also wonder if someone else not caught on camera could have killed Mr. Hammer. We have to consider that possibility also. Then allow me to remove that doubt from your mind, Your Honor. Will the witness continue her testimony, please? No need to ask twice! <laughs> the time of poor Hammer's death was 2.30pm, true? The only person I saw go to the studio before then was Will Powers. No one else went there. If they had, I would have seen them. Hmm. So if no one else went to the studio, 
then it would have to be this steel samurai who did it. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right, it says photo number two. That's important. Objection. Hold on. Look at this photograph one more time. This photo was taken by the camera at the gate for the studios, correct? Yes, sir, Sunny. So whenever anyone passes by here, it automatically takes a picture? And here I thought you didn't know your head from a hole in the ground. Right. Anyway... It's also true that the computer in the guard station records all security cam data. Oh, you know, if you wanted to work at the studio, we might have an opening. That very computer printed out this photo. Note that on the back of the photo are printed the words, October 15th, 2 p.m., photo number two. Even I know that means it was taken at 2 p.m. on October 15th. Really sunny. Actually, I knew that too. The issue here is the bit at the end where it says photo number two. Photo number two? The computer only held data for one photo on that day. Don't you think that's odd? Shouldn't this photo be photo number one if it really was the only photo? Order! Order! Please tell the court what you mean by this, Mr. Wright. Naturally, that's what I want to ask the witness. This evidence shows that not one, but two people went to the studio that day. Yet there is only data for one of the photos. Who could have erased the data for the other photo? Only someone with access. The security lady herself. <coughs> huh? You watch your mouth, whippersnapper. The only person I saw that day was Will Powers. But the camera on the gate fired twice. That means two people went by. I still think the first one should have been the victim, but it's weird that it wasn't recorded. Well, yes, that's what it would seem to mean. Can the witness explain this to the court? Uh, uh I don't understand these newfangled computer things. Uh, edgy boy, help. Uh, believe me, I want to, but I don't know what this means either. Huh. Some help you are. You're a whippersnapper too. Whippersnapper? Something the matter, Miss Oldbug? Oh, that's right. I, I just remembered something. Let me guess. Someone else passed by the gate. Someone other than the Steel Samurai? Well, yes, I suppose you could put it that way. I see. Your testimony, please. Every day after I finish my guard duties, I have one other important job to do. I go through the photos recorded on the security computer and check them. I throw out any photos that aren't suspicious looking, you see. Come to think of it, now I remember throwing out one photo that day. Ah! Uh, Miss Oldback, this is the first I've heard of this. Well, of course, Sonny. I'm only just remembered it. Mr. Wright, please begin the cross-examination. Well, I'd say this was a turn for the unexpected, but I kind of expected this. Can we press on that? Is that bad? How many photos are there usually? On a day when we're open to the public, we get more than 500 people. But on filming days or rehearsal days, well, we don't have much money. We never get more than 50, and that's a big day. Do you back up all the security camera data? Well, they keep telling me to, yes. 
But those computers are just so frustrating! Oh, joy. How exactly do you determine what isn't suspicious looking? Oh, you can tell by looking at their faces, for the most part. For the most part? This is a murder trial, Mrs. Oldbag. Well, I didn't touch that suspicious looking Will Powers photo, did I? I think she's missing the point. Well, who the heck was in the photo you erased? Huh, a fanboy. A, a fanboy? Steel Samurai fanboys, real freaks if you ask me. They get information about the rehearsals from gosh knows where. They're always hanging about. When was there that day? Well, wait a second. Didn't you just say no one else could get in? I locked the main gate so no one could get in. Those were your words. Well, if you must know, there's a drain that goes into the employee area. The grate has been loose for a while. It leads outside and, well, that's where they come in. They come in through the drain? I told you they were freaks. Oh, and... And? They're kids. Children. Whippersnappers. Kids? So, on the photo that you erased? It was a boy. Probably second or third grade. What? Oh, order. Order. Let me get this straight. You saw two people pass by the gate on their way to the studios that day. One was the steel samurai dragging his leg. The other was a boy who looked to be in about second or third grade. Oh yes, well, we see his type there every day. Can't stop him. Can't catch him. A boy in second or third grade. Hmm. I assume it would be hard, if not impossible, for a young boy to wield the samurai spear. Impossible, I think. It's quite heavy. Right! As I said, I didn't pay him much mind. That's why I erased the data. Uh, Nick? What's going on? I mean, the boy was there. That makes him a suspect. Yeah, and they're already trying to unsuspect him. This court will take a five-minute recess. I want the defense and the prosecution to consider this new information. And no forgetting vital information this time. Mr. Powers? Yes? Tell me straight. Were you really in your dressing room? You didn't go to the studio. I, I didn't go to the studio. I was sleeping, honest. So who was the Steel Samurai in that photo? How should I know? The Steel Samurai costume was off in the corner of the dressing room. Anyone could have walked in and taken it, really. What? You should take better care of that stuff. I couldn't imagine anyone would want to steal a Steel Samurai costume. So where does this leave me? It doesn't look good. <gasps> You're the only likely suspect right now. Nick! What are we going to do? First, we play for more time. We'll start targeting someone else that could conceivably have done this. Right! And it'll take them so long to shoot us down that we can get another day! Right, but if we pick the wrong person, we might lose on the spot. You don't sound very optimistic. I'm not optimistic at all, actually. Hey, Nick, it's time. Okay, let's go. What does that mean? Please don't sigh like that. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. Mr. Edgeworth, will you present the prosecution's thought on this matter? The prosecution's thoughts are simply... Nothing has changed. The other person who went through the studios was a boy of roughly 10 years of age. The photo we do have may not be hard evidence, but there is still no one else that could have committed the crime. I call for a verdict of guilty for the defendant, Mr. Will Powers. Hmm. Very well. 
Mr. Wright, your thoughts? The defense disagrees with the prosecution's claim. There is another person who could have committed this crime. Order. Interesting. Let us hear who you have in mind. However, be aware that this court does not look kindly on accusing the innocent. If you accuse someone who is obviously innocent, you will be penalized. Right, great. As if the stakes weren't high enough. So who is this person, other than Mr. Powers, who could have committed the murder? I don't think it could be Penny because Penny didn't know about the hurt ankle and wouldn't have known to limp. Likewise, Well, I guess the grade school boy could have known about the limp if he was watching from the drain. But... I mean, I think it could be the grade school boy. We only have the security guard's word that he was a grade schooler and considering that she's got a good motive for covering up evidence or covering up that she destroyed evidence she may have aged him down a little bit furthermore I feel like he possibly could have used the spear since we know the spear was broken he, he might could have just used the tip of the spear And we also don't even know that, I mean, just because someone is small and slender doesn't mean that they're a grade school kid. But having said that, I don't think the judge would believe everything I just said because he doesn't seem to be very imaginative. So I feel like the judge has accepted that it couldn't possibly be the kid because a kid couldn't have done it. So, even though I think the kid is a viable suspect, I think the judge doesn't. And we, Phoenix did say that we were playing for time. This isn't about finding the real person, it's about playing for time. I'm interested that security lady is an option here. I wouldn't have thought to accuse her, actually, but it makes sense. She was on the property, and... She could have gone to the dressing area, stolen the suit, gone past the gate with a limp to to show off that it was a samurai. I mean, she's been the most vocal. I don't really think it's her, but it's worth pointing out that it could be her. Take that, Edgeworth. So yeah, I'm going to pick security lady. Why not? Plus, she had a crush on the victim, so maybe, I don't know, maybe he turned her down for a date or something. There, there's your motive. Boom. I don't think it's her, but I think we can stall for time with her. It was the security lady, Wendy Oldback. Who? The steel samurai is dragging his leg in this picture. That means whoever was in the suit knew about that morning's injury. Maybe because they had been watching the action scene run through. There was only one person other than Powers and Hammer who knew about the injury. The security lady old bag. What? Ripper Snapper? Order, order. It, is this true, old bag? Old bag? That's Ms. Old Bag to you. Ms. Old Bag was standing guard alone at the main gate. She was by herself. In other words, she has no alibi. She could have briefly left her post to steal the steel samurai costume. 
then slipped into Studio One, the scene of the murder. Why would she go to the trouble of wearing the steel samurai costume? Simple, your honor. In order to frame my client, duh. This is what I mean about the judge not having any imagination. She knew the camera at the gate would take her picture. If she was in his costume, she could point the finger at Mr. Powers. I see. Excellent deductive reasoning, Mr. Wright. Oh yeah, right here. Sherlock Holmes the second, baby. <laughs> That's odd. Isn't this the part where Edgeworth passes? Does he usually jump up with a new objection and some damning evidence? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, does the prosecution have an opinion on this matter? The prosecution has no meaningful objections at this time. The prosecution has never had meaningful objections, Edgeworth. Ha <laughs> ha, take that. It was... I, 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 there was... Yeah. Clumsy. What? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, so you all think I did it, is that it? Edgy boy, don't just sit there, do something! What's my move? Maybe now's my chance to take this the whole way? The very same reasoning that makes Mr. Powers a suspect in this case can be used to cast doubt on Ms. Oldbag's actions on that day. Why would I do something so horrible to poor Hammer? You forget that Mr. Powers lacks a clear motive too. Hmm, indeed. I did it! Now Wimbag is one of the suspects. No hard feelings, I hope. Wait just a minute! What about the other person who went to the studio? The boy! The one whose photo I erased! He's only a grade schooler, though, as you said. Second or third grade, was it? That doesn't matter! When I was that age, I could pin my old man in ten seconds, tops! Uh, your thoughts, Mr. Wright? That boy is not the killer. What? How can you be so sure? Or is it be nice to kids and mean to your elders' day? I have proof. Proof? Indeed? Then let's see this proof, Mr. Wright. You have proof that shows the boy could not have committed this murder? I don't think the spear is... Oh. Oh, 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 oh. It's not just the spear, though, is it? You had to have a key card to get into the gate. And a kid probably wouldn't. But she would. Take that! The scene of the murder, as we all know, was Studio One. However, you need a card key to enter Studio One. How could a boy with no formal relation to the studios have a card key? I see. Well, would the witness care to comment on this? Whew. The windbag, speechless. This has got to be a first. Very well. This court will suspend proceedings on the current trial for today. Mr. Edgeworth, please find out more about your witness, Ms. Windy... What was her name? Something old bag, your honor. Then the prosecution will look further into this old bag before we continue. <laughs> They're really milking this pun, aren't they? <laughs> that is all. The court is adjourned. Did we Wait a second! Hey, Chip, you've been come join us? Were my dulcet tones just too beautiful to resist? Come here, baby boy. Oh, gosh, you've got me back. Okay, there we go. Sit on the floor. Wait a second! Oh, I'm not going to just sit here while you run off barking up the wrong tree. Me? I'm talking! Oh great, stop the presses. The windbag wants to talk. Ms. Oldbag, what is this all about? Have you omitted something from your testimony? Actually, if you must know, there's something I was told not to talk about. N not to talk about? 
By who? Huh? You mean it wasn't Edward this time? Because it was Edward last time! We'll, we'll testify! Global Studios wanted me to keep quiet about something. There were some other people at the studios on the day of the murder. They said they had nothing to do with it, see? So they told me to just pretend they hadn't been at the studios that day. But if you're going to go accusing me, I'm not going to let them get away scot-free. Okay. Ms. Oldback, this is crucial information. Why did you keep this from the court until now? Ain't you been listening? They told me to shut my trap, and I always do what I'm told. No, this isn't a bad dream, Your Honor. Witness the power of the old bag. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Who were they? Who were these people? Well, the director and the producer, for starters... The director? We should have known something was fishy. How could they have done a run-through of their action scene without a director? Oh, crap, that's a good point. Of course. Yes, well, I was surprised no one asked about it. So where were these people? Why didn't Penny mention it? The director was in the employee area all morning for the run-through. He joined the producer around lunchtime and they had a meeting after that. Where? Oh, in the Studio 2 trailer! Studio 2? Well, if you look at the guide map, here it is. You go through the gate all the way to the left. The path where the monkey's head was fallen over. Well, Mr. Wright, would you like to continue the cross-examination? I think I've already asked all my questions, but... I... I feel like that's telling us to stop, so... Well, let's double-check. This is a trial for murder. I know that, silly. Still, they were pretty convincing about having nothing to do with it. And they gave you a little bonus on the side. I think I've asked all the questions I have to ask. No, I haven't. Yeah, we're repeating. That's all. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're good. Let's take a break. Your Honor. We have learned there were others at Global Studios on the day in question. The director and the producer and some big wigs were all present. Yet, as we stand here, they have not been questioned. I hold that it is impossible to declare a verdict on the defendant, Mr. Powers. The court acknowledges the defense's point. The prosecution will gather more information about the witness, Ms. Oldbag, and more information about these other people we have just been told of. <laughs> yeah, Ezraith, you gotta do your job. Sucks, doesn't it? I understand, Your Honor. This ends the day's proceedings in the trial of Mr. Will Powers. That is all. This court is adjourned. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I was right to ask you to defend me. Ah, uh, really, it's nothing. Or should I say... I didn't understand that. I think I read it wrong. 
We'll be going down to the studios to do more investigating. We have to find out more about this director and producer. They'll be turning up in the next trial as witnesses for certain. So now's my chance to get material for the cross-examination. So Nick, have we figured out just who it was in that Samurai Steel costume? Could it really have been old Windbag? What do you think, Mr. Powers? I don't think it was her. Not really. Neither do I, Nick. Yeah, I know. Look, I was just buying time back there. Someone had to be the bad guy for a bit to take the pressure off Mr. Powers. Poor old windbag. I feel kind of sorry for her. Well, she wasn't winning any points in there with or without my accusation. Okay, let's get down to the studios. Right, we'll be back to visit you soon. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. Yay! Well, that was exciting. So I thought we didn't have any liars so far. You know, any lying witnesses. But I was wrong. We had a lying witness. Um, just what she was lying about wasn't being the killer. She was lying about what she saw that day. So... Ooh, okay, that was exciting. Um, so we'll, we'll pause and, and break the video here. And uh, when we come back uh, tomorrow, then I guess we'll be investigating the studio. So that should be exciting. Once again, this is Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. My name is Anna Mardal, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.